In the previous video, we learned how to load page data. Towards the end of the video, I also highlighted a point that within the load function, when you have to fetch data, make use of SwellKit's fetch function rather than native window.fetch. In this video, let me explain why. I'm going to help you understand with an example. And for this example, I've already set up the necessary code to save us some time. Let me walk you through the code. Step one, in db.json, which is the data source for our JSON server, I've added a new entry called postcodes. This will serve an array of three postcodes. In the browser, if we navigate to localhost port 4000 slash postcodes, we see that array. Our goal is to populate an address dropdown in the UI for the user to select their address. This API data, as it stands though, contains a lot of fields, most of which are unnecessary for our application. So for step two, to help us remove the unwanted fields, I've created an API route. In the previous section on routing, we have learned that API routes are perfect to fetch data from an external server and format the data for use in our application. So I've created a postcodes API route to serve that exact same purpose. Within the routes folder, within the API folder, I've created a folder called postcodes. Within this folder, I've created a plus server.js file, which of course is SwellKit's convention. Within this file, I've defined a get handler function that fetches data from our JSON server and extracts only the necessary fields before sending it as response. If we navigate to localhost 5173, slash API slash postcodes. We see the postcodes data, but with only the relevant fields. For step three, I've created an address route to accept user's input. Within the folder, I've defined a page.js file to load the address data from our postcodes API. For each postcode, I've built an address string and returned it for use in the UI. In page.svelte file, we extract address list from data and provide the same as dropdown options. In the browser, if we navigate to slash address, we should see the dropdown working as expected. Flat 1, flat 2, and flat 3, the three values for our dropdown. Now, this setup is a combination of what we have learned about API routes in the first section and about loading page data from the previous video. Nothing too complicated, I hope. But now that we have the setup out of our way, let's address the elephant in the room, which is the warning we see in the console. For best results, use the fetch function that is passed to your load function. So in page.js, load event, and we destructure fetch from load event. Now this fetch function from SwellKit improves our data fetching in two ways. First, you should know that our load function with native window.fetch while fetching from the API route makes an HTTP call. A request from our server back to our server is pretty redundant, which I'm sure you'll agree with me. The performance also takes a slight hit because of the additional hop. By using the load event argument and destructuring the fetch function, that extra hop is avoided. Svelkit's fetch function directly calls the get handler without making an additional request. Second, when using native window.fetch, we must specify the full URL as argument. However, with Svelkit's fetch, you can make relative requests. The path can now be just slash API slash postcodes, and the protocol, domain, port are all optional. If we head back to the browser and refresh, we still see the same output. So SwellKit's fetch function works exactly like native window.fetch, but with a few additional features which benefit the code we write. 
And that is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. If we go back to our products route from the previous video, Svelkit's fetch function doesn't really have any benefit over native window.fetch. However, there's only upside as you write more code, which is why I wanted to make sure you get into the habit of using Svelkit's fetch function instead of using the native fetch function. All right, if this is clear, in the next video, let's understand a very important detail about the load function. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.